Four, it's time for member statements. The member from Leeds Grenville. Mr. Speaker, I rise with sadness to celebrate the life of Elaine McClintock, who passed away last week. Elaine left the world a much better place for her time in it. She cared for her community with the same passion and commitment she displayed in her nursing career. Elaine volunteered for and helped many, lead many organizations, and all were made stronger by her involvement. She and John, her beloved husband of 58 years, founded the Leeds Grenville chapter of the Multiple Sclerosis Society in 1965. John suffered from MS and was blessed to have Elaine by his side. Together, they raised hundreds of thousands for local support services and research. Elaine was also a tireless champion for accessibility and equal opportunity. She and John uh, found, helped found the nonprofit Education for Quality Accessibility and became the go-to experts for business and government. The physical improvements to our community from their work are countless, but equally important is how they changed attitudes. They opened our eyes to the barriers, seen and unseen, that people with a disability face every day. That's a tremendous legacy, and Elaine is dearly missed by the many whose lives she made better. Speaker, it was an honour to call Elaine a friend, and today I ask everyone to join me in celebrating this remarkable life and expressing condolences to John, their sons Mike and James, and the entire family. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Let me let me ask a question. Okay, I'm just wondering if the member had a moment. Are we good? Member from Hamilton East Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the persistence of deep poverty in this province is a scandal. Low-income Ontarians are being crushed by hydro and rent increases. Working people can't pull themselves out of poverty because they do not earn a living wage. And Ontario desperately low social assistance rates leave families hungry, underhoused, and sick. One in five children in my city of Hamilton live in poverty. 80% of Hamilton's 20,000 food bank users are spending half or more of their monthly income on rent, up from 49% just one year ago. These people are at extreme risk of homelessness. We need more social and affordable housing, we need a $15 minimum wage, and we need social assistance rates that meet people's basic needs. This is what Ontarians need from this budget. The time to act is now. A year ago today, I introduced legislation to the social assistance rates to the actual cost of living in different Ontario communities. Twice, my bill has passed second reading, and for the second time, it is stalled waiting in committee. People across this province are asking the government to back Bill 6. When, when will the government act? The government ask, must act now. The minister responsible for the poverty reduction strategy and 24 of his colleagues voted for Bill 6 at second reading in September. It is imperative that they back up their votes with real action. Get Bill 6 committee hearings now. And I must also add, on the first time my bill went through, there were even more Liberals that stood up, including the Premier, backing this bill. But it's still sitting in committee. Something's wrong, Speaker. Thank you. Further members, statements, the member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. This morning, I had the pleasure of speaking at the Clarendon Board of Trade, which is located in my riding of Durham. It was an honour to provide an update to my constituents on the projects that are on the way in Durham, as well as answer qu any questions that they had. Mr. Speaker, I was thrilled to share an update on the GO Train Eastward extension, something that I know my constituents are very excited about. I, too, am looking forward to this extension. It's going to improve commutes, drive local econ economic development, and improve the quality of life for Durham residents. Mr. Speaker, I was also able to share how we will see the benefits of the $19 million investment towards greenhouse competitiveness and innovation initiative right in our community. Agriculture is hugely important for Durham's way of life, and the province's greenhouse sector will be able to grow in size, innovation, and productivity. Among other product, pro project updates, I was able to also share how our, our government is investing $50 million into, into Ontario colleges. Our colleges, colleges and Durham College specifically provide students with fantastic learning experiences and job-ready skills. So it was a pleasure to be part of this investment announcement. Mr. Speaker, it's always a pleasure to meet with my constituents and provide them with updates on how I'm serving the riding of, the, of Durham. Thank you again to the Clarendon Board of Trade for having me this morning. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Haldeman Norfolk. 
Last weekend, I attended the annual meeting of the Long Point uh, Waterfowlers Association held at Delta Waterfalls Hunting Heritage and Conservation Center. It's a former youth ranger station. The uh, Long Point Waterfowlers co-manage public hunting in the provincial park. They put in hundreds of volunteer hours coupled with uh, significant uh, public and uh, private grants improving wetlands in the park. Delta Waterfall are moving their Canadian headquarters uh, to my riding because Norfolk contains some of the best waterfall habitat in North America. At the former uh, ranger station, Delta Waterfall is hosting uh, heritage hunt days for apprentice hunters. They're hosting uh, hunter safety courses and uh, are looking at having uh, students use the, uh, the property. Uh, all part of a, a significant uh, long tradition of wildlife uh, conservation down in our area. The concept of hunters supporting conservation isn't unique. It's the North American model of wildlife conservation. Many success stories, the uh, reintroduction of the wild turkey, elk, for example, and the, uh, the contributions of hunters to conservation. We're now celebrating this week through National Wildlife Week, a week that was to commemorate the birthday of Jack Miner, internationally recognized yeah, yeah. conservationist and a hunter. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Essex. Thanks, Speaker. I want to give a shout out and congratulate the 2017 Officer Boys Hockey Champion uh, from Bell River, Belver Nobles from my hometown. Uh, they are Kagan Daugherty, be between the pipes, Speaker. Kagan Daugherty, Patrick Timpity, Shane Lafrette. The D men are Dylan O'Neill, Nevin Navaco, Colton O'Brien, Davis Edmonds. Uh, and the forward, the grinders are Owen Mernick, uh, Colin, uh, Connor Dumbinski, Andrew Thomas, Dawson O'Neill, Riley Hammond, Isaac Hertz, Drew Denemy, Colton Candido, Logan McFarlane, Eric LaRue, Cody McFarlane, Ryan Nicholson, Hunter Bailey, Keegan McGeen, and Reese Robertson. Speaker, last month they uh, competed in the Office of Championship in Fort Francis, and by all accounts, Speaker, it was an epic final game. Uh, they were the uh, they were seated at fourth place. It was a Cinderella story, Speaker. They came up from nowhere. Uh, they came from behind to uh, to win in overtime. Uh, the Nobles scored with 77 seconds left in regular uh, in regulation time, and Captain Cody McFarland netted the only goal in the five-round shootout to give Belver a 3-2 win over the th number three seed Hamilton St. Mary's Crusaders in the gold uh, in the gold medal final. Uh, speaker, uh, shout out to Cody McFarland, who's obviously a sniper. Shout out to the coaches, Dave Brack and Mike Smith, who was my son's coach this year. He did a great job. Justin Paysono, Austin Jennings, and a special shout out to Ray Bracken, who is the, the, the spirit of hockey in Lakeshore and Bell River for many years. He was one of my coaches. Uh, he epitomizes coaching and volunteering. He's a, a, an educator himself, and he's the reason Bell River hockey has been so successful over so many years. Great job. Way to represent, boys. Congratulations. <clears throat> For those, for those old timers out there, Foster Hewitt has nothing on you. That's it. <laughs> Appreciate that. Member Stevens, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is always a pleasure to rise in this House to share the great research and community initiatives taking place in my riding. This past Friday, I was invited to visit the Queen's Psychology Part Department by Dr. Christopher Bowie. I was thrilled to be joined as well by Dr. Sylvain Roy the president of the Ontario Psychological Association and the CEO, Dr. Jan Kaspersky. I had the pleasure from hearing from psychology students and several clinical psychologists working in the community. It was a great opportunity to discuss the work that is being done to address mental health in our community and across the province from the field's leading experts and students. Students, educators, researchers, and legislators are working together to develop an innovative, forward-thinking approaches to overcoming some of the challenges in areas such as child development, insomnia, and depression through neuroscience. As a result, the team has made an incredible difference in our schools, our hospitals, and even in our justice system. They are passionate advocates who have earned a reputation for delivering high-quality care. 
I appreciated the opportunity to see the next generation of clinical psychologists, the students, show that same level of community involvement as their mentors. Among the students' projects that were presented, Queen students Jackie and Joyce organized the Got Your Back initiative, which provides students experiencing mental health challenges with peer support while educating all students on campus about what they can do to support friends during periods of crisis. Thank you. As a huge advocate for mental Thank health, you. I offer my warmest yes. gratitude for your incredible work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The Thank member you, member Speaker. Uh, last week, Nipissing University hosted their fourth uh, robotics competition, the For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology, or FIRST, in North Bay. The event brought in 27 teams of talented individuals from high schools all across Ontario. Teams match up with some of the world's most cutting-edge technology companies to build some truly amazing machines. In just six weeks, students put together robots designed to compete in high-intensity robotic sports. The competition tests teams' members' intellect, creativity, and overall strategy. The FIRST organization inspires our youth to take an interest and pursue careers in science, technology, and engineering. This year's competition saw its fair share of impressive builds. But in the end, North Bay's very own Team 1305 came out on top. This is the first time a team from North Bay has ever swept the competition. Their outstanding performance has earned them and their robot entitled Clark a spot at the Ontario District Championship this coming weekend. Uh, I wish them the best of luck, and I hope to see Team 1305 and Clark at the World Championships later this month. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Republic of North. Recall, uh, Canada unfortunately also experienced uh, an unfortunate event on January 29, 2017. There was a shooting of six individuals in the mosque at the uh, Islamic Centre of Quebec in Quebec City. Uh, six individuals lost their lives. I understand others were shot injured. Uh, Seventeen children were left homeless, uh, sorry, fatherless because of that particular incident. Uh, we'll be welcoming speaker tomorrow uh, in the Legislature of Ontario, uh, the leadership of the Quebec Islamic Centre, which will include Imam Hassan Guillé, who gave a Martin Luther King-level uh, funeral oration to Canada, uh, and also uh, Mr. Al-Rawani, the President of Islamic Relief Canada, as well as Dr. Benesa, manager of the Islamic Relief of Canada for Quebec, and uh, Mr. Yangui, president of the Islamic Center of Quebec. To be followed, Speaker, there is also held by the Consulate General of Pakistan and the, His Excellency Imran Siddiqui an exhibit to which all members, and I think of almost 300 members of the public, are scheduled to attend of uh, Islamic calligraphy. I understand that uh, 40 artists. Uh, their works will be displayed in rooms 228 and 230. The Premier of Ontario is uh, scheduled to arrive at approximately 1.30 to 2 p.m., and I understand other leaders from other parties and, indeed, all members of the Legislature are welcome. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Chatham, Ken Essex. Thank you, Speaker. As a new official opposition critic for tourism, culture and sport, it's my pleasure to highlight achievements in Ontario sports. And in that spirit, I would like to congratulate the Kent Cobras for my riding of Chatham Cobras. Kent Essex for winning the Ontario Minor Hockey Association Bantam AE Championships. <laughs> Speaker, Kent won a hard fought victory in Tilbury, tying the series at five points and sending the series back to Brampton, where the Cobras conquered the Brampton 45s in overtime to win the championship. Here, here. This was a series they were not expected to win. Oh, but underdogs. the Brampton 45s are a powerhouse. But the Kent Cobras stepped onto the ice in Brampton's championship banner filled barn and were not intimidated. You never know After a Kent play. goal was disallowed, uh, the team still trailed 2-1 to one with just six minutes to play. What happened? Then, with 29 seconds left in the third period, Matthew Cunningham scored the tying goal to force overtime. Wow. And in true Cobra fashion, Dakota Van Gotham struck quickly, needing only 58 seconds to score the thrilling overtime winner wow. in the voice of Leafs radio play-by-play -play announcer Joe Bowen. Holy, Holy Mackinac! Wow. What a goal! I'd also like to commend my neighbor and forward 
uh, Dylan Hawley, for representing our street Holy proudly this Mackinac. season. He will be the hottest road hockey free agent on the block this, this summer. Sign him up. Each and every Kent Cobra should be proud of their team's accomplishment. Congratulations, Kent Cobras. Holy yeah. Mackinac. Holy Mackinac. Thank you very much, Don Cherry. <laughs> I thank all members for their uh, statements and